So this will be my first time using Desmos embedded in Newton. Um, so they got, it looks like the Desmos graphing calculator in here for us to use the squeeze theorem. Just a quick summary of what the squeeze theorem says. The squeeze theorem says it helps us evaluate limits where there's some sort of indeterminate form, where it'd be like zero divided by zero if we were to plug in the limit. Um, and what the squeeze theorem does, how it evaluates that limit is it says, okay, take your original function, call it uh, like g of x in this case. If you can't evaluate a limit at a certain point, then find a function f of x that's above and an a, h of x that's below g of x on some sort of interval. Find two functions where you know they're above uh, your, your original function and below the original function. That's the squeezing part. We're trying to find something that's directly above, directly above, below. But they have to be special because there's an infinite amount of things that are bigger, right? They have to be special in that their limits both equal each other. So that's kind of long-winded. If that's the first introduction you've heard to squeeze theorem, you'll definitely want to go read the textbook about it. But um, let's see. Uh, they say they give us a function g of x. This is g of x graphed here. Uh, we're supposed to enter the functions on the graph. So it looks like they just want us. They've given us what they think f of x and h of x should be. So I'm just typing everything in. And if you're wondering what keys I'm pushing, I'm pushing one, the slash key for division, two, I'm hitting the right arrow to get out of the denominator, X, I'm holding shift and pressing six to get the caret key, and then three, and then I'm pressing the right arrow to get out of the denominator, and then minus two. Okay, so let's see. Um, F of X is purple g of x is green. Now look, f of x is bigger on some interval, but then it becomes smaller. If we're, if we're looking at x equals zero for a limit, f of x isn't going to work because it's not always bigger than the other function. Uh, they, did they specify the limit? No, they didn't specify the limit. It's kind of implied, but they should say that we're supposed to be valuing the limit as g, approach, g of x, as x approaches zero for the function g of x. So as x get, is getting close to zero, it looks like it should be negative two, but we're supposed to prove that using the squeeze theorem. And again, the squeeze theorem, the fx always has to be bigger than your origin, than the function you're trying to squeeze. It's not. This is bigger on the left side, but it's smaller on the right side. So the squeeze theorem does not apply uh, because f of x is not always less than or equal to g of x, which is not always less than or equal to h of x. Same problem with h of x, right? h of x starts less, ends greater. It's always got to be less than or always got to be greater than for the squeeze theorem to apply. Okay, this is a different question. Um, we got, okay, this is like our f of x from the last question. This is like our h of x from the last question. They're saying this is always less than g of x. And they're saying this is always greater than g of x. So they've given us this statement that this function, we don't have to analyze it anymore. They said this function is less than g of x. This function is bigger than g of x. So what's the limit as x approaches negative 4? And that is within the interval that they told us. Um, so in order for the squeeze theorem to apply, uh, the limit for the smaller function and the limit for the greater function have to be the same. So if we plug negative 4 into this function over here, Negative 4 squared gives us positive 16, but that negative's on the outside, so that gives us a negative 16. And then uh, negative, we're doing the limit as x approaches negative 4. So negative 4 times negative 8 makes positive 32. So 32 plus 16 makes 16. And then 16 minus 21 gives us negative 5 on the left side. So doing the same thing over here, that's 16. Um, 8 times negative 4, negative 32, plus 11, negative 5. So the limit on the left and the limit on the right are the same. They're both negative 5. So by the squeeze theorem, even though we don't have any idea what g of x is, we know its limit is going to be negative 5.